Hello, Namaskar and a very good morning to all the viewers watching our session out there. This is Simran Singh and you are watching this particular live telecast on eVidya channel number 6 to 12. Besides, we have so many different mediums through which you all can connect in our live interactive sessions. You can also participate with us. And one of the other mediums is our YouTube channel as you all are well versed with. It is NCRT official. So it's around 11 a.m. on your watch and since the past 5 to 6 days at this particular time that is from 11 a.m. till 12 in the noon. We have our very special sessions based on the demonstration of virtual lab experiments on Diksha and e Shala augmented reality content. So we all know that laboratory work or lab experiments is very important when it comes to the process of teaching and learning. Not only to understand the theoretical frameworks but also to comprehend certain outputs for the practical work and at the same time virtual labs they provide equality access to education for each and every child so providing us more highlights and guidance into this session of virtual labs we have with us our four experts in the studio so allow me to introduce you with our guest for the session here in the conversation we are joined by miss nidhi adlakha ma'am namaskar ma'am welcome namaskar madam is a senior academic consultant at cie tncrd then we also have with us Ms. Pinky Singh. Namaskar. Namaskar. We welcome you as well. Madam is again Senior Academic Consultant at CIET and CRT. We have our third panelist, Ms. Chinti Chhavade. Namaskar. Namaskar. Good morning. Aapka bhi istakbal hai aaj ke satr mein. Madam is Academic Consultant at CIET and CRT. So in this live interactive session, if you have any of the queries, you'd like to ask us anything, then do mention it in the comment section of NCRT official. Besides, here is a contact number flashing on your screens. So feel free to give us a call at 8800-440-559 and a specific mail ID is also flashing on your screens. It is dth.class12 at the rate ciet.nic.in. So let's begin our conversation on the demonstration of virtual lab experiments and e Shala augmented reality content. So in the first place here, I would like to invite Nidhi ma'am in the conversation. To apprise our viewers more regarding augmented reality, please. Uh, thank you so much, Ms. Simran. Uh, first of all, I would like to take you to a resource of augmented reality. And after AR, we will have a look on some of the experiments from virtual labs which are available on Diksha. So starting from AR, for augmented reality, first of all, the purpose of augmented reality is to enhance um, learning experience of the user. Uh, whatever diagrams are given in NCRT textbook, those diagrams can become interactive if we use this app which is available on Google Play Store that is ePartshala AR app that is developed by NCRT and uh, you can download it for free and can observe, can study with the help of augmented reality. So how you can do so, I will show you with the help of one of the resource. So you can see on the screen, on my screen, I have already opened the app. Here you have a simple menu. First of all, you have to select class. Right till now, we have uh, worked for class 9th and 10th. So I will select class 10th. Out of all the subjects, right now we have worked on science. So now we have to select chapter. I am selecting chapter number 6, life processes of class 10th. And further, we have to select a topic. So I am selecting human respiratory system. So we have to click on load activity and uh, Now uh, you can see that I have this uh, class 10th book. It's not necessary that uh, you have book with you. If you have a photocopy of the diagram of NCRT, you can take that. If you have a digital copy, you can take that also. You just require that NCRT textbook diagram. So here we have index. I have to open chapter number 6, which is on page number 93. So I'll directly open the diagram. So you can see I had simply scanned it and it appeared. So now you can see that as I have moved it away, AR camera, you can see uh, the second icon. This is AR camera. When I click on AR camera, this background disturbance will not be continued. So now you can see first of all the learning objective is written. So what is the learning objective of this particular activity? It is to make you learn various or about various organs of respiratory system. So here you will um, have a look on the whole 
complete diagram of respiratory system and along with that you will also get to know each and every part individually. So here right now you can see that the complete diagram is visible. Now if I click on particular part, particular organ which are listed on one of the side then only that particular organ will be highlighted. Like if I click on nose, so only nose is highlighted, only nose is visible. If I click on mouth cav cavity, only mouth cavity is highlighted and along with that its information is given at the top. Then if I click on pharynx, then that particular organ is highlighted. When I click on larynx, that is highlighted and for every organ its basic information is given at the top. So you can easily read it and understand and side by side you can have a look that what is the, what is the location of each and every part of the respiratory system. When I have clicked on bronchi then these bronchi are visible. If I have clicked on alveoli because alveoli are very small in size so they are specially shown as a highlighted portion. Then I have clicked on lungs, you can see that the lungs are inflating and deflating and along with that if you can see that some of the particles, if you look at the nose, so some of the particles are coming out of the nose and some of the particles are entering inside the nose. As you can see that here it is mentioned that black particles are representing carbon dioxide and red particles are representing oxygen. You already know that we take in oxygen, so if you notice red dots had entered inside the nose. You can, uh, it will be visible to you clearly. Now I think you can see that black dots are coming out. Can you see black dots are coming out from the nose and red dots are entering inside the nose. So you can correlate that to what, how the lungs, whether the lungs are inflating or deflating when oxygen is entering, when CO2 is coming out. You can correlate these two information. So this is how we make a particular diagram interactive when we use this app which is ePartshala AR app and this is available for free. All of you can easily use this app. So that's all about AR. Now I'll take you to virtual apps. So just give me a second. Meanwhile, our viewers can start practicing it on your own and you can also open the Diksha platform and uh, simultaneously you can uh, just move to the different tabs or the options that Madam is presenting for all of you. Yes, and uh, now we can go to virtual labs. For visiting virtual labs which are available on Diksha, you just need to open any browser. Like here, I have opened Google. So I have to type Diksha. I have typed Diksha and I have to click it. You can see at the top Diksha.gov.in appears. You just need to click on that website. Here it uh, takes us to the Diksha website. On this corner you can see that banners of various initiatives or whatever quiz is going on. All these are uh, shown on this side. So here you can see there are various dots, you can click on each and every dot and get to know what all initiatives are uh, released. And if you, if we have to go directly to virtual apps, then we have to click on the fourth last button and it takes us to virtual apps. We just need to click on this explore icon, you can see that I have clicked on it and it has taken me to virtual apps. I have to scroll down and what do we get? We get various sources which are available from class 6 to class 12th. I am going to show you content related to chemistry and biology. So first of all, I will take you to class 9th because I'm, I want to discuss an experiment of class 9th, I have to click on explore icon. So whatever class you want to study for, you just need to click on explore which is given below each and every class. So I am clicking on explore of class 9th, here you can see Hindi and English medium both are shown. But right now content related to English medium is available, we are working on Hindi medium, it will be available in the near future. So now I will click on English medium and I will click on science. So here you can see that class 9th science lab manual has opened up on this side you can see all the experiments are listed you can click on any of the experiment and you will get to know what all resources are connected are linked with them so here if i have opened this one the first 
resource is experiment PDF. This experiment PDF takes us to the lab experiment which is given in the lab manual which you already use hard copy as hard copy. Here you can see that we have option of zoom in, zoom out. So you can zoom in to make it readable. Afterwards you can see explanation resources are given. So under explanation resources we have certain videos. Here you can see second and third one are videos. And if we click on the first one, it takes us to various resources. So today I am going to show you one of the experiment which we have included at the end under more experiments. I am clicking on more experiments and I am taking you to the experiment of Rutherford's scattering experiment. I have clicked on it and I have to scroll up once again to reach at the screen where all the resources are visible. Here you can see another link is shown. I have to click on this link and as we discussed in our previous sessions as well, what do we have? We have a variety of resources so that you get all round experience of that particular experiment. Starting from theory. So here you can see that the first tab that is theory is already opened. Default it is open. By default it is open. So what you can do? You can go through the um, content which is given in theory by that you will understand that what you are going to study in that particular experiment. It is written in simple language you can easily understand if you read it on your own. Then, then next is procedure. Here all the steps are shown uh, which will help you to perform experiment which is given here under simulation. So here you can see that the procedure is given for normal view procedure is given for zoomed view because here we have simulations as normal view and another simulation. The same experiment is represented by two simulations, one as the normal view, the other one as zoomed view. So how to go about all the steps are given for both the view in the procedure tab. So I will take you now to the experiment. First of all I have clicked on normal view. So here you can see that uh, some basic information is given. So if here what is written, click on this button to start emission of alpha particles. So uh, under Rutherford's scattering experiment, what are we using? We are using alpha particles which are positively charged because these are actually helium, uh, helium atoms from which um, electrons are removed. So that's why these alpha particles are positively charged. So here you can see this is a source of alpha particles and this is this line is representing that all the alpha particles will be directed towards this gold foil. So here we have gold foil, here we have alpha particles and when I will click on start emission, you have to see that how alpha particles are traveling. So I am clicking on start emission. So here you can see that most of the alpha particles are going in the forward direction and some of them are getting deflected. So why, why that happens that also we will study. Here as you scroll down you can see that these observations which I have just now told they have already written here that if you read it most of the alpha particles are going straight without any deflection which you can see also I will just move it slightly. Then next is some small number of particles are deflected by small angle. So you can see that some of them are deflected by small angle but very few particles they get deflected by large angle. So whatever we are observing in this experiment those observations are written just below the simulation. Now I will take you to the zoomed view. So here in the zoomed view you can see the same thing is shown. I will click on the show labels. And when I click on the show labels, here the charges, the charge which is present that is also visible. We have to do the same thing. We just need to click on start emission. And when I will click on start emission, alpha particles which are positively charged, they will start moving towards these gold foil particles. So uh, I will first of all click on start emission. Now you can see the same. What we had observed in normal view, the same we can observe here that most of the particles are going straight, some of them are getting deflected. The same is written here when we have scrolled down, you can see that observation and its related conclusion is written. So I will read for you, most of the, the first one, the first observation is most of the fast moving alpha particles 
passed straight through the gold foil. So what, what can we conclude by this observation? We can conclude that most of the space inside the atom is empty. Then the sec second observation which is given, it says some of the alpha particles were deflected by the foil by small angles. What does it indicate? It indicates that the positive charge of the atom occupies very little space. And the third observation given is few particles bounce off the nucleus, which indicates that all the positive charge and mass of the gold atom were concentrated in a very small volume within the atom. So by studying these observations, conclusions, we get to know what is the structure of atom the, according to the model which was given by Rutherford. So after going through theory, procedure, these both the types of simulations, you can go and check how much you have understood. You can check your information by clicking on Viva Voice, then answering each and every MCQ, clicking on submit. You will get to know how many answers were correct and how many were incorrect. Now I'll click quickly take you to another experiment which is of biology and I'm going to take you to class 11th. So I'm doing the same process as I told you. Here I am selecting biology. And uh, again, we have list of experiments. So I'll take you to one of the experiment that is here, experiment number 27, effect of temperature on salivary amylase. So I'm taking you to that. I'm scrolling up once again, clicking on the link given. And again, we have the same tabs, theory, procedure, then we have animation also. So we can quickly have a look on the animation. Uh, just a second. And there are and also there instructions are that are depicted for, for all of you. you. Inserting videos so that you get to understand and move towards the next slides and as you can also watch under the video slides that there are subtitles for all of you written over there so that you can read them out and understand and comprehend the different aspects that are associated with it. So virtual labs are very important uh, for all of us because I remember when I was studying as a kid uh, we barely had just one or two chances to visit the physical laboratories to do the experiments of chemistry biology. And after the uh, second time, it was only the final practical where we were judged for that. But virtual labs, uh, it gives us uh, an edge over everything else in our classroom scenarios because we can just practice our experiments n number of times that we want to do it. So uh, we can try playing it again. Yes, sure. Or uh, instead of showing you that animation, that animation is going to show you the same experiment which are which we are supposed to perform yeah. right now. So I'll directly take you to simulations. So here you can see on my screen, I have opened the tab of simulator. I'll just zoom in a bit. So now you can see it is clearly visible. Here on the screen, we can see action of salivary amylase on starch. So when we eat food, in our food, there are various components. There is carbohydrates, proteins, fats. So one of the carbohydrate which is there in large quantity is starch. And when we eat food, saliva is released and saliva has a particular enzyme that is salivary amylase. So that enzyme works on starch and it digests starch. It breaks down starch into smaller particles into simpler carbohydrate. So here what we are going to see that how much time salivary amylase takes uh, to work when different temperatures are provided. So here you can see on one corner temperature is there. We can select temperature. There are three options 5 degree, 37 and 70 degree. So I am selecting first of all 5 degree. So when we have kept this enzyme, when we are allowing this reaction that is um, degradation or digestion of starch with the help of salivary amylase, how much time it takes at 5 degrees Celsius. So what for that, what we are supposed to do, here we have saliva. In this, we have this enzyme salivary amylase. Then you can see here we have a boiling tube which has starch inside it. Then we have this dropper and here we have a set of tubes which contain iodine. 
So, you must have studied that starch reacts with iodine, it combines with iodine and it gives us blue color. And if starch gets digested, then we will not observe blue color. So, here we will observe that in how much time, that for how much time we observe blue color and when starch digestion has started. So, you will understand it in a better way when we will actually perform it. So, I will quickly take it, I have taken saliva into the tube and now as soon as we put saliva, we have to take the dropper and we have to dra drag it and release the contents in the first one. You can see that the timer has started. So, I have to take readings after every 2 minutes. So, I have to again dip it and I have to put it in the next one. I have to again, I have to again take the dropper dip it in the solution, put it inside the next tube. So, I have to keep doing it so as to get reading after every 2 minutes. So, what you can observe is that blue color uh, we had seen that till 11 minutes or till 10 minutes we had blue color and afterwards now in the last tube we cannot we do not observe blue color what does it indicate that iodine requires starch to show blue color and because starch has got digested in 12 to 13 minutes that is why we are observing color of iodine instead of blue color. This is what is written when we click on I that is inference or extra information. What is it? It is more time will be taken by the enzyme to digest the starch at lower temperature. So, it is showing that when the temperature provided is comparatively low, digestion process slows down. Now, I will take you to the next temperature. I will take you to, I will perform this quickly. So, I have released saliva inside the starch and we have to do the same thing. We have to keep doing the same thing. What has changed? Only the temperature which we have provided for the reaction to occur, that temperature has changed. So, here you can see that in 6 minutes, in 6 minutes reading, we can see that the blue color has not appeared. That means, when 37 degrees Celsius temperature is there, digestion is comparatively quite fast. And inside our mouth, we have 37, inside our body, in fact, I should say that we have temperature 37 degrees Celsius. So, uh, the, our body temperature is apt for digestion to take place. So, in under inference also it is written at 37 degrees Celsius, the enzyme is most active and that is why digestion um, occurred within 6 minutes. The same thing we can do with 70 degrees Celsius. So, because the steps are same, I am not going to perform that. At 70 degrees Celsius also, what you will observe that the process takes a lot of time to take place. So, then you can go to viva voce and you can answer these questions and you can submit, you can get to know whether you have understood the experiment or not. So, from this experiment, we can conclude that when we have higher temperature or when we have lower temperature, then what do we observe? That digestion or starch takes more time and when we have uh, uh, 37 degrees Celsius temperature, then digestion process takes less time. And that is why starch got digested within 6 minutes, but at other temperatures it take it took more time to digest. So, that is all for biology. Uh, thank you so much ma'am for discussing these minute yet necessary details with all our viewers and I am pretty sure that all our viewers uh, must be feeling that it is a very nice or explorative manner with the help of which uh, you can understand and comprehend your experiments in a better way. So, here I would like to invite our next speaker in the conversation, Chinti ma'am. She will be discussing more on uh, physics simulations. Uh, so, ma'am please. Thank you. Just a minute, I am showing you. 
Meanwhile, our viewers can take a note that we still have around 30 minutes left in the conversation. So, if you have any of the queries regarding our today's topic of discussion regarding any area of demonstration, so do mention it in the comment section of NCRT official. And I am pretty sure that our experts would be more than happy to answer all your queries and to resolve them in our sessions itself. Yeah, do we have it? Yeah. Okay. So, here I am showing the physics experiment of the class 11. So, to explore the experiment of the physics, we have to select, first we have to select the class. So, here I am selecting the class 11. We have to click on the explore. Then we have to select the language. So, here I am selecting the English language and I am selecting the physics, subject physics. So, here you can see the number of the experiments which are mapped with the lab manual of the NCRT. Here I am showing the screw gauge experiment, how to use the screw gauge. So, you will see the experiment PDF here and also the explanation resources and also the videos attached related to the screw gauge. So, I am clicking on the use of the screw gauge. Here you can see the link of the experiment. So, I will click on this link. It will lead such to the screw gauge experiment. Here you can see the theory of the experiment which provides the background knowledge of the experiment. So, you will get the basic of the screw gauge about the parts of the screw gauge and how to perform the experiment in the laboratory and how also find how to find the least count of the screw gauge. After that we will move to the procedure. You will see the number of the materials required to perform this experiments and here we have the real lab procedure and also the simulator procedure to perform the experiments on the online lab. And after that we will note down the reading, so we have also the observations also. So also we have the animation related to the experiment. which help to perform the experiment in the laboratory. So, let us move to the simulator. This is the main part of the uh, online lab. So, here you can the simulator window of the screw gauge experiment. So, before performing the experiment, we have to check the zero correction error. So, for this, I will click on, I will rotate the screw head. So, I will move it to I will rotate it forward towards the anvil. This is the anvil of the screw gauge. So, that its screw gauge touches the anvil. So, I will keep rotating it. <coughs> here you can see the zoom, zoom out part of the screw gauge. So, here I will note down the error of the you know, screw gauge. So, here you can see the main scale which is the reference line of the screw gauge is below the uh, 0, 0, uh, 0 reading of the circular scale reading. So, you will see this is a negative error. So, we, I will note down the reading of the screw gauge which is 0 0.02 mm. After that, we have to first select the least count of the screw gauge. So, you can select 0 0.00 5 mm or 0 0.01 mm. So, here I am selecting the 0, 0.0 mm and to whatever you want to select the object, you can select any object. So, here I am selecting the glass plate. So, to find the thickness of the glass plate, I have to click on the glass plate object and after that I have to again rotate the screw gauge head towards the glass plate. Here, we have to note down the main scale reading and the circular scale reading. So, here you can see the main scale reading is the 0 0.03 m and the circular scale reading is the 39 m, 39. So, we have to, to find the circular scale reading, we have to multiply it with the least count. So, I here I selected the least count of the screw gauge 0, 0.0 mm. After that, I will solve this reading to find the final reading. So, 
so now what is the final reading of this screw gauge so i have to add the main scale reading plus circular scale reading so my final reading is a 3.39 so we have to ch check the reading so i will insert it here in the enter reading box and i have to check now it is showing that the my reading is incorrect so i have to enter it again so to find the final reading i have to add the zero correction error so which we which we perform in the starting of the experiment so i have to add this so after adding this my reading is 0.41 3.41 so here you can see that my answer is correct so in a same way if i want to select the object i have to reset the experiment so i will click on the reset option then after that i have to again check for the zero correction error and here i will note down the zero correction error this is a negative error and again i will select the object here i am selecting the lat shot so to find the diameter of the lat shot i will click on the lat shot then again i will rotate the screw gauge so here again i will note down the reading here we have a main scale reading is the 7 mm and the circular scale reading is a 27 mm 27 and multiply by least count so we have we have 7.27 reading but we have to add the zero correction so we my reading is 7.27 so i have to again check my reading so this is wrong so so to perform the experiment again we have to click on the reset button in a same way we can select for the other objects also like we can choose a wire and also the irregular lamina so in a same way we can do the other experiments and perform the perform the experiment and note down the readings so after performing the experiments if we want to check our understanding we have to click on the viva boss here we have the questions by answering these questions we get the knowledge of the explain how much we understand from this experiments and also we have the video related to the experiment which help to perform the experiment in the lab and this is a real laboratory experiment and also we have the different also we have the different resources related to the experiment thank you thank you so much ma'am for explaining it at length to all our viewers generally what happens is uh, physics seems to be a bit of a uh, difficult subject uh, apart from biology or chemistry but with the help of these experiments i think it will come very handy conducive and easy for all our students and also the kind of questions that we have the viva wall that we have it can make our concepts more clear and at the same time it could uh, enhance our understanding of that concept definitely these experiments and the way resources are presented these experiments are presented in such a way that if teacher is explaining with the help of these resources then also it will be beneficial or if a student wants to go through these resources on her own or on his own then also they are easily understandable so i think uh, therefore we can say that there are a lot of benefits of virtual labs that are being definitely. offered to the students definitely 
so you are getting information not only uh, as uh, in the written form mm. but you are getting information in the form of video in the form of uh, questions also you can check your understanding and the most important and the best thing is you are getting the chance of performing that experiment of course that too uh, from your home from your school wherever you are you can just try it whenever you get the time sure uh let's proceed ahead in the conversation here i invert, uh, invite our next uh, speaker pinky ma'am in the conversation apprising our viewers more about the simulations or experiments associated with mathematics so pinky ma'am you may continue yeah sure thank you let's explore one of the maths uh, experiment of class 9 so my colleague has already explained to you how you can access so we'll explore uh, class 9 uh, mathematics experiment virtually and once you click on the subject mathematics you uh, you will see the list of maths lab experiment of A ncrt and i'll select one of them uh, for the demonstration and you'll see uh, exterior angle property of a triangle and and on scrolling up uh, you can see this link you have to click on it and you will land on the online lab page and here you can see the theory uh, related with this maths lab maths lab experiment that is exterior angle property of a triangle here we will try to uh, verify this property of a triangle on uh, uh, simulator uh, virtually so on the first tab that is uh, theory you will see all the theory related with this concept that is about triangle and and on the second tab you will see procedure if you perform this if you perform this experiment in the lab uh, in the maths laboratory what steps you are supposed to follow and if you perform this uh experiment virtually what uh, steps you are supposed to follow are mentioned here so and on the third tab animation uh video is given uh, first you can watch it and then you can perform on your own on the simulator so here i'll demonstrate only the simulator how this uh, uh concept of mathematics mathematics can be explored can be enhanced so let's start so you have to just follow the instructions uh and so here we can see the objective to verify exterior angle property of a triangle and here all the uh, steps are written and we can just directly go on and perform so on clicking you can you can see the work page uh, here and we have to just follow the instructions so let's click uh, the first instruction i can see here is go to the tools and select the triangle so let's select the triangle and here we can see uh, uh, we need to create uh, or draw a triangle following the steps so here it is saying mark a point a on baseline so let's i'll click anywhere on this line and the second step is click again on baseline for another point b so i'll click again and for uh, point c uh, click above baseline so i'll click anywhere here so i i have uh, a triangle abc so and uh, i can see uh, uh, an exterior point on the baseline and now we will form angles so for that we just need to click on point a to mark angle cab point b to mark angle abc and point c to mark angle acb and we will uh, we require an exterior angle for that we need to click on point d and here you can see since uh, this experiment helps me to verify the the property that is really the exterior angle is the sum of the opposite interior uh, angles that is angle cab and acb so for that let's first measure these two angle so here i can see a protector is given and i can just 
uh, click and use it and measure the angle. So, I am putting or putting this protector on this angle and I can estimate uh, the, uh, the angle is around around 60 degree. I will just estimate, I am not sure and I will just uh, write my estimation in the uh, uh, in the right uh, section. Uh, and here similarly, I will measure angle ACB. So, here rotators are given and I can and place my protector to measure uh, this angle. And again I need to fix it correctly so that I can measure it. So, student can measure uh, like this and I can see it is around uh, 79. It is my estimation 79 degree and now uh, as it is a verification of the sum of these in two interior is equal to this angle the exterior angle. So, it should be this the to the sum of these two angles. So, the sum I would say 139 degree. So, let us measure it is my estimation and I will measure this exterior angle also. I will and fix this protector and I can uh, measure it that it is around 139 degree. So, I will verify by clicking on the verify button and uh, you can see it is showing me uh, that um, uh, my the correct value was 63 and uh, 77 and uh, so the sum is also not correct. So, I since it was my estimation I was just verifying, but this uh, simulator is helping me to verify again and again and I can perform this uh, experiment again and again. So, here we were we, we, uh, we could see that virtually you can perform n number of time and enhance your learning. So, uh, so on this virtual lab various mathematics labor uh, maths experiments are given you can explore uh, n number of time and en enhance your learning. So, that is all from my side. Thank you Pinky ma'am for elaborating on the simulations associated with mathematics. So, I do believe that whenever we talk about virtual labs there is a very important point that comes in our mind uh, that it is beyond the physical constraints of time or location. So, ma'am uh, would you like to reflect on this? Yes, uh, as you can also see that we do not require to check that just like in school we have limited time. We have to go to school in the morning and then we have to uh, return at 2 o'clock. So, we have that limited time and we can go to the lab only when we have that particular duration. If we do not uh, perform experiment at the school in the school hours, then we do not have the chance to perform. But with the help of virtual labs, we do not have that constraint. We can just open our phone or laptop or tab, whatever you have. You just need uh, internet connection and you can go through any experiment from the virtual labs portal. Uh, you can go to any class, you can uh, from class 6 to class 12, mm. but you can um, check out experiments whenever you get the chance, whether it is uh, at night or midnight, some students uh, study early in the morning, some students study um, later at night. So, at that time school cannot provide you all this information, but virtual labs do provide you all this information. Of course, so let us proceed ahead and dive deep into the conversation. Here we have our fourth speaker in the conversation. Uh, we are joined by Ms. Priyakshi Gupta. Namaskar, ma'am. Namaskar. We welcome you here. And ma'am is also a senior academic consultant at CIET and CRT. And she will be discussing more on uh, the languages or the simulations or experiments or I should say the activities that are related to the language English. So, ma'am, you may continue. Thank you, Simran, ma'am. So, good morning and a warm welcome to all the viewers watching this live session. I will be focusing on 
English content available on virtual labs for Deeksha. Now, we often see students struggling with the concepts of grammar. As language teachers, it becomes imperative for us to ensure that students use proper syntax, correct sentence structure, and have contextual accuracy. Virtual Labs acts as a catalyst in recreating the concept into something simpler in order to deliver quality content and ensure language competence among students. Today, I will be demonstrating an activity titled Passive to Active Conversion, available for class 7th on Deeksha. Moving on. So on Virtual Labs, when you scroll down and navigate to the different grade tabs available, you select class 7, Explore. And I am redirected to the different activities available, ranging from passive to active voice conversion, active to passive vo uh, voice conversion, and singular plural conversion activity. So uh, as you can see, I'll be focusing on passive to active voice conversion. And we can see the slide uh, visible on the screen. So I'll hover my cursor on the highlighted passive to active voice conversion written at the bottom of the slide. And you can see that the link uh, becomes visible on the screen. So when I click here, I'm redirected to the Virtual Labs page here, which has tabs ranging from theory, procedure, lab, Viva Vos, references along with feedback. So on the theory part, you can have a look at the concept of active and passive voice, where active voice focuses on the action performed by the subject, whereas the passive voice focuses on the object which is receiving the action and not performing the action. So if you look at the theory part in detail, you can strengthen your concept of active and passive voice Along with the concept, you also have a set of examples for each type of voice here. Plus, when you scroll down, you can also see a tip line given here based on how to identify the active or passive voice with an example. And there are other ways given to recognize whether a sentence is in passive voice. And you have to watch out for these keywords that are available at the bottom. You can explore this as a learner. And you can also go through the rules for active to passive conversion and vice versa with respect to the tense of the verb. So you have all the tenses here, simple present, present continuous, still, future perfect. Along with that, along with the rule, uh, set of rules available here, you also have rules for pronouns in passive to active conversion, where passive voice will have me, active voice will have I, uh, and so on. Similarly, you also have a tabular form, a tabular form for pronoun number and person table. So whether the person is in singular or plural in first, second, third person, what exactly you have to use per sentence. So this was the theory part of this activity, which you can go through in detail when you explore this further. Moving on, the next tab shows the procedure on how you have to perform this activity. So as you can see, on the screen, the first step is you have to select the desired tense. So you will have a sentence given, you will have your uh, tense that you have to select from the drop down menu. And then you have the sentence in passive voice. However, as a learner, you have to convert the sentence in active voice using the drag and drop feature of this activity. You have to rearrange the given words to construct the corresponding passive voice of the given sentence. So for a, for a given active voice sentence, you are you are passivizing it and identifying the correct answer here using the drag and drop feature. Also, for better engagement with the learner, we also have an option for viewing the hint. In case you face any difficulty or get stuck in between, you can use the hint feature to recapitulate, uh, recapitulate the concept and perform the activity accordingly. When you click on submit to check whether the passive voice is properly constructed or not, you will also receive a feedback at the bottom based on whether your subject should come in the beginning of the sentence, whether your helping verb has been identified correctly or not, based on which you can find out the correct answer. So this was about the procedure tab. 
we will now straight away move on to the activity area which is under the lab feature. So you can see the screen opens to welcome to the English lab, your activity title, you have to click on start, you have to enter your name and then click on start. So the question automatically appears here that states convert passive voice to active voice. Your selected tense is simple present tense. You can also change it accordingly and level up your knowledge and strength here. So as you can see that the sentence in passive voice is given as the scooter is driven by Stephen. Sentence in active voice, the words are jumbled. You have to rearrange it. If you want to have a look at the instructions once again, here the entire set is given in bullet points. You have to select the desired tense. The sentence displayed is in passive voice. You have to rearrange the words below. Click on hints to view hints. Click on submit and click on next to view the next sentence. If you want to go back to the theoretical part of the concept, you can click on theory and go back to the concept in detail once again as a recap. If you want to look at the hints tab, it automatically suggests that in active voice, the positions of subject and object are interchanged and in active voice, helping verb precedes the main verb and depends on subject and tense. If I click on show more, base form is used in simple present tense. This is as per the tense that you have selected. Now the scooter is driven by Stephen. So let us say I change it to Stephen drives the scooter and I click on submit. So my result is correct and it automatically gives me the positive feedback. On clicking next, I have a different sentence. In case I make a mistake, let us say T drinks the Ritu. We know that it is incorrect, but what if I click on submit, not knowing for a fact whether this is a correct answer or incorrect. It automatically gives me a detailed feedback stating that my subject is incorrectly placed and should be placed in the beginning of the sentence and it also gives me the remedy. So it has a problem statement as well as the remedy that I need to follow. Again, if I drag the words and rearrange it to the correct sentence and click on submit, it gives me the positive result. That means my answer is correct. So that was about it for English activity and as we saw that simulated methods of teaching help in developing confidence in the students as it gives them the autonomy to perform the activities and experiments at their own pace. Plus, it establishes a link between theory and practice. Immediate feedback as we saw in this activity, that immediate feedback through positive reinforcement also helps in motivating the learner and develops interest towards the concept. And regular grammar exercises sometimes bring about monotony and a sense of disinterestedness among the students. And a good language activity ensures clarity of concepts and provides an enriching learning experience. Virtual Labs on Deeksha offers a great experience to the learners to explore and practice curriculum based concepts and activities in an engaging manner. You may explore other resources available on Virtual Labs on Deeksha and make teaching learning experience a fulfilling one. Thank you and Namaskar. Over to ma'am. Uh, well said. Thank you so much for providing these essential details uh, to all our viewers. And also one very significant point that you have highlighted Priyakshi madam is that it gives us the uh, independence or I should say the liberty to try our hands on, on the different experiments on our own. Uh, I think as a student this really makes us happy. When we are doing it for the first time, we get all the instructions and the hints and absolutely you don't require anybody else to guide you. You can just explore it on your own. So you may also try doing it and if you have any of the queries, then of course our experts are here to take your queries and answer them for all of you. Uh, so once again, I would like to take the moment to thank all the panelists who have been a part of this conversation. Thank you Nidhi ma'am. Thank you. Uh, so thank you Priyakshi madam. Thank you Pinky ma'am. And we also had with us Chinti ma'am. So thank you to all the four panelists who have discussed at length about uh, the demonstration of virtual labs on the Iksha platform and also e Shala augmented reality content. So viewers, I have a very special information for all of you. As you know that we have been discussing for the past four to five days that from 3rd January till 7th of January, that is for five days. Our event is right there for all of you that is named uh, Kala Utsav. So the Department of School Education and Literacy Ministry of Education, Government of India has organized it for all of you. You can participate in it. You can watch and encourage all our students. 
because uh, we are running these or conducting these events for all of you so that the artistic talent of students can be showcased we can highlight it on a bigger platform so let's watch few visuals or the slides for kala utsav India is our land of diverse culture and glory. Let's showcase the art with the glimpses of its story. We hear the sound of music, we dance to angry bells, paint a picture, make some toys we joy. Let's do solo acting. Let's dance. Let's sing and paint. Some toys we joy. Kala utsav. Children from every nook and corner will perform. Oh, great! We will have glimpses from each and every stage. We hear the sound of music. We dance to make it best. Paint a picture, make some toys with joy. We hear the sound of music. We dance to make it best. The picture makes some toys we try Kala Utsav Kala Utsav Kala Utsav Kala Utsav Kala Utsav An initiative of the Department of School Education and Literacy Ministry of Education Government of India announces Kala Utsav organized by NCERT from 3 to 7 January 2023 at Regional Institute of Education Bhubaneswar Kala Utsav Kala Utsav The live telecast of Kala Utsav is presented to you by Regional Institute of Education Bhubaneswar Odisha NCERT and we are eagerly looking forward to your active participation in the event So viewers now it's time for me to wrap up this particular session because uh, but stay connected with us because we have our upcoming session that is teaching learning interventions for inclusive classroom where we try to raise awareness about inclusive classroom setup so stay connected to NCERT official and keep watching evidya channels we'll be right back within few minutes namaskar <laughs>